people. The beginning of every YouTube archive video is me doing this and waiting. And it's lying to me. Just make sure we have the audio correct here. Oh, I have the wrong title. I'm going to change it. Uh, hanging out with <laughs> Carly. Uh, -da 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 -da. Uh, okay. Okay, now our thing is updated and it looks like our sound works and people are joining. I'm going to tweet it real quick. Uh -huh. Oh, I should get my phone so I should... There you go. Yeah. All right, friends, let's get started. Uh, welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during this panini and, you know, for the rest of your adult life. Uh, last time on the show, we talked to Joe Lepore about his sweet tooth and strange sodas. It was also, for the first time, Attack the Pantry, the musical. <laughs> Uh, you can watch all of the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos. The entire archive, archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-O-V. You can make sure to subscribe there. Guess what? We have some administrative stuff today. It's my cookbook's fourth birthday. You can get it on my Etsy store, which is linked below the video. Um, you can grab a signed copy. It ships internationally, and you make sure to use the code four years, all one word, to get 20% off. Uh, happy to give you a discount. Um, it's valid until Saturday, so grab a copy before I run out of author copies and you have to get them on Amazon, oh God. Um, great news, I am a Twitch affiliate now. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month. So if you have one, click that purple button that says gift a sub and you'll get the little crown next to your name <laughs> in the chat. Lots of good links below, like the Patreon and my social media. One way to really help us out today is to share the stream and tell people that you are watching so that other people can join in and learn from us. There are three of us on the screen Dude, from okay. us. Oh, I have guests. <laughs> Hello. Oh! Hello. <laughs> it's you. Hello, it's us. I was just logging into the, the to, into Twitch. Oh, yeah, so you can see the chat. So I can see the chat. So oh. guess. Who are you and what do you do? I'm Carly Minardo. Yeah. I'm Christopher Hastings. Uh, I'm an animator and a performer. I I am I was gonna say I work on Rude Tales of Magic, but I'm on Rude Tales of Magic. <laughs> yes. Our sister podcast. The fun city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I am a, uh, a comic book writer mostly. Uh, and am also on Rude Tales of Magic. <laughs> I, I love that we got both of you on today, so thank you for joining me. We're married! We're married. Hey, We're married. If you didn't know. <laughs> if you didn't know. Um, oh, welcome to the chat. Seven Bean Salad and Kodiak are here. Nice Hello. to see you all. Bonjour. 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 <laughs> uh, how do you... So, we know each other from... The podcast world. Yes. 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 Um, I, I feel like we probably connected on Twitter first before we got to meet in person. And I then it was like so. a long, Jen, I feel like you and I had a long online romance before we, we finally did. got to meet in we, person. It currently stands, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think it would, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for those of you who don't know in the chat, uh, we both <laughs> record our podcasts under the umbrella of Fortunate Horse, which is run by Taylor Moore. You might recognize Taylor Moore as the voice that starts off Rude Tales, is that correct? That's right, he's yep. the innkeeper. Take off your coat. Uh, <laughs> and he's your bad guys. <laughs> yes, and he plays all the bad boys on Fun City. So uh, that's how we all know each other. And we actually only met in person what? for the first time last year, Days exactly before. a year ago. <laughs> It was, it was, Locking yeah. Down the bunk. It was March. It was March. I'm sorry. It I, was March 8th. I don't know it, what month it is anymore. <laughs> it was March 8th, and it was the last time I saw, like, socialized with a group of people. Same. In person with my Same. Sister. Yeah. But it was really fun. We played a lot of games. It was really fun. And um, I learned that you two like to cook. Sure do. <laughs> we do. We love it. We love it's, it. What a wonderful coincidence. Oh, I, I made, uh, that's right. I made that, that, uh, that rum punch uh, for that yes. party that I've been developing over the years to the point where I, I decided I was allowed to name it myself. 
So I call it <laughs> Persephone's Revenge. Ooh. Uh, I mean, I felt that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I went home pretty tipsy that night. <laughs> that was great. It's very good. Very good drink. Um, but I'm really glad to have you here. You both are lovely and funny and full of information. So Thanks. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> to share that with everyone here. Let's catch up in the chat. We're saying hi to Knife Snail. Congrats on the marriage, they say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Ten Zach. years. Ten years. Ten years. That's, Ten years. That's an accomplishment, y'all. I know. Marriage is a lot of work. <laughs> It's a choice. It's a choice it's you make every day. You make the choice every day. You make it every day. You wake up and you're like, I guess we're I doing go, this but another we're not. day. We'll do this one more day. One more day. And every <laughs> one day you day do that. One day more. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> Can't wait to be married to you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so the next part of the show, I'm going to share my screen. I promise. Yay. It's not It's not gross. I promise. <laughs> Welcome to my screen. I changed Ooh, my background. Nice uh, my background changes every like 15 minutes. Oh. But um, if you would like to be featured in this part of the show, chat friends, uh, you can submit photos to be cooking photos, cooking memes, or fun things you found at the grocery store. You can tag me on Instagram or Twitter. My username is Randwitches. It's not my username on Twitch, which is very sad because uh, that happens sometimes. But uh, I love to show off uh, these things that people send in because it's really fun. Uh, so Andre, let's start it off, sent in a license plate that just says Egg Boy. I egg love boy. that. An egg energy bumper And oh, I didn't even notice the egg energy and then a Gudetama to the left. That's incredible. This person Small. loves eggs. I think they're in the biz. <laughs> Almost as much as me. No, that's not. Yeah. That looks like a Homer. It oh, it is an, an egg. It could be an off-brand Gudetama. Yeah, I think it's Homer Simpson on as an egg, which is never knew that existed. That's so great. Thanks, Andre, for sending that one in. I love that. Um, Brian, <laughs> Brian sent this this strange one in. I mean, it's more egg content. I gotta say, uh, save savior or smack decisions. Um, my cousin came home to find a pigeon built a nest uh, and laid an egg on her bed. Luckily, as of last week, I'm a pigeon expert. <laughs> Pigeons are notoriously terrible nest builders, so this one stick constitutes her attempt at a nest. I mean, I think she saw the bed and was like, that someone else did This looks comfortable. Yeah. Uh, my question is, why is there a pigeon in the house? <laughs> How do you know it's a pigeon egg? How, like, I, I wouldn't, if I know. walked in and saw an egg on the bed, I would be like, honey, why'd you put an egg on the bed? I wouldn't I assume that a pigeon had come in and laid <laughs> I but don't like props know. to this person who knows more about about it than I do. That pigeon also might have just been wandering around too, and they put the facts together. Yeah, maybe. Like, um, I we we believe that uh, so uh, there are like cats that roam uh, the shared backyard of this block essentially. Uh huh. And um, I I believe they managed to get a good swipe at pigeon last summer because uh, oh, no. it was sort of just wandering around um, oh, buddy. while all the cats were like very interested in it and then <laughs> it managed to get to like a safe spot and I was like okay well you should go On and speed. it just, like, just kind of like hung out overnight and then I was like I don't know what to do with this pigeon <laughs> um, but yeah I think they'll just like walk around for a while sometimes uh, it did eventually fly away it, it, it got its energy it's okay back. it lived the pigeon lived oh my the pigeon gosh lived at least as long as I saw it until it left. I don't know where oh, it is. Now. Godspeed you, curious pigeon. <laughs> uh, Dylan sent in a couple of salads. So there's two salads. Ooh, this is a so. Cajun salad with shrimp and I think a steak underneath. I was wondering oh, if that was spam, but it looks a little thick I for spam. I think it's a steak. There's lots of mushrooms here. Um, I also did this like for a period of time where uh, I'm eating too much meats. I'm gonna make it a salad, but then pile still lots of meats on top. <laughs> I love Cajun seasoning. Me too. And then the second salad, of course, is a steak salad as well. <laughs> it looks great though. The mushrooms, I love that. tomatoes. Those greens. And it looks like medium doneness. My yeah. my preference, which is great. I can taste the mm, 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 yeah taste the, like, saltiness of the, mm. <laughs> Good job, Dylan. Looks very it's peppery fun. too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> James sent this meme. Uh, 
content warning everybody it is a goya painting <laughs> it's that painting oh, oh my hell God. yes I... oh yeah thanks james for sending this one in that that's is kind incredible. of the that's the reaction i wanted that, that was amazing that's incredible <laughs> I love the comment. The first comment here is Goya, us uh, ex Goya. Yeah. <laughs> Beans incredible. are the Goya. <laughs> That's incredible. I know. I kind of love um, uh, art interpretations in food dishes. I it's love kind that. of amazing. Um, I, I think a couple years ago, I think it was the Guggenheim was doing a Mondrian cake. Did you ever see that? No. It was very meticulously made because, you know, you have to make every color first of cake. And then you you make batons of each color and then fit it together in a loaf pan and then set it and then slice it so it you know, makes that You know, who is that for? I don't know. <laughs> who is that That for? seems like a lot of work. That's what I want to know. This None doesn't of the people look like... going to those galas eat cake. This doesn't look like a lot of work. This looks like fun. I appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not precious. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do there? You, you toast the bread and then you scrape back the burnt bits to, like, sort of sculpt out the white? Maybe um what do you... or you have some kind of branding tool or sure. or uh coloring yes. in the middle maybe with yeah. a dye or i something. was wondering if because of the way there are some darker pockets that look like pretty organic i was almost wondering if they had brushed on like a soy sauce or something dark and like maybe because that looks like negative just like the negative space looks mm -hmm. uncooked to me yeah it doesn't look toasted at all so, if you have a hot tip on this bread, we want to know. Dial one eight hundred bread <laughs> bread tips. Bread tips. <laughs> My old job used to throw away bread tips, and I would always squirrel them away to take home. Yeah, because I don't I, like yep. wasting things. Oh, we've talked about this. You worked at uh, you worked at Murray's, right? Yes. And I worked yes. at Brooklyn Larder, and we both know the same cheese guy, Tim. Tim, the cheese guy. So sweet. Yes, wonderful person. <laughs> but they didn't like serving the ends, so I would take those. And... Sure. <laughs> Every I job them. I had, I would always take the bread ends because it's love... really good baguettes. I love the end of the bread. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's see. What's this? This is from JV. These are sloppies with a side of uh, – sloppy sliders with a side of green beans. Mm. That looks great. Yeah, I like that uh, – He. this is like the second sloppy – plate that he sent me so i think that's a good genre to <laughs> to, to explore is just yeah. sloppies across the world or different meats and stuff these are these pictures are all making me very hungry i don't that's... think i've had a sloppy joe in 25 years i think for me maybe five <laughs> but I, I really yeah. didn't like them as a kid and then i i just it hasn't occurred to me to try it now but i'm like that was good yeah, like I think I would do it without the canned sauce. Like I would make the yes. sauce from scratch. Um, and there's so many different directions you could do a sloppy if you think about it. Really, you don't have to be do a um, tomato base. You, mm -hmm. What if you did? What if you did like an Alfredo sloppy? What if you did with like uh, a sausage maybe? Yeah, like yeah. an Italian sausage. How cool yeah. would that be? Or like um, if you think of any spaghetti sauce essentially uh -huh. <laughs> put it in a bun put it in a bun um and even just spaghetti i've had in a bun which was very exciting I, carb, well, carb, carb 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 i won't carb. put anything on a sandwich <laughs> i adore it yes i love it this is why we're kindred because i mm -hmm. love sandwiches you know mm -hmm. that um and this is from m Birnbaum. this is and so cool Growing lots asparagus. of wild asparagus and i don't i didn't fact check this but asparagus takes a long time to grow do you know I think Never it does. Tried. I think I didn't it takes know like that, but I be I would believe it because it's so they're so fibrous. Yeah, I think that they they take a while to come out of the soil, and then once they're out, it's like it takes ten years for them to grow. Like, <laughs> tall. why are we eating so much asparagus? I, didn't know I don't know. So Wait, is We're that eating true? so much. I I can fact we can check out check on it later. Oh my that's, gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, but these look great. It looks so wild too. Like, it's not like a cultivated patch in the yard. It looks wild. Yeah. Which um, happens in California a lot, actually, which is cool. Oh. Very I wonder, cool. I wonder what kind of soil asparagus likes. I could imagine it liking a gritty soil. Oh, you're going to have to explain that to me when we get to your photos. Okay. My goodness. Uh, let me catch up here in the chat. We have Liz in the chat saying that poster is a doctor, so I believe them. <laughs> uh, 
I came, oh, okay. I came across a Tinder profile that was an egg once. <laughs> they said it had been a while since they were laid. <laughs> Thank you for that, Bearclaw Roar. <laughs> Knife sale, welcome to the chat. Uh, oh yeah, good old cheesy Tim. Tim the cheese man, Chaler. <laughs> uh, welcome Kelly to the chat, good to see you. Bread Hi, butts Kelly. are the best, yes. Kelly is a mod for us on our Discord. Oh, uh, nice. Lovely to see you here. Um, and Kelly, Martin, I recognize. Martin says, just had asparagus season. I don't think we've quite gotten our asparagus season here in New York, but yeah, hopefully yeah. soon. Uh, hopefully soon. Uh, real quick, we'll go through things that I have done this week. I watched a movie. Do you know Double Fine, the game studio? Oh, yeah. I watched this whole thing. Yeah, you did? I, yeah, I, I backed their Kickstarter. It was so Oh, great. cool. Was... Fun fact, I used to work for two-player. Um, oh. I was their publicist for a long time um, when they were doing chiptune and Minecraft documentary stuff uh, oh, and cool. packs and like, um, what's it called? Penny Arcade. Mm -hmm. So um, they are now, for anyone who doesn't know, they are now the in-house video crew for Double Fine. And so they get to make documentaries every day, which is really fun. And um, a really cool twist that happened is our director of photography, Asif, became a game developer and became a game designer just from this. So um, Double Fine has a movie out right now that you can watch for free on YouTube. And it's a documentation of Amnesia Fortnite, which is a two week game jam. And so anyone in the studio, no matter what your position is, you can pitch a game. And for the second year in a row, Asif, who is usually behind the camera, pitched a successful game. And so they got to prototype um, the snail game, which was his. Uh, and so uh, cool. This, this one I'm really mad didn't get chosen because Miyuki pitched happy singing sandwiches. <laughs> she was like, there's a voice from above saying, you must make sandwiches. And I was like, I love her and I want to be her friend. <laughs> That's amazing. I sent a team up. Yeah, I told her when I come when I come to California next, I want to trade pickles and make sandwiches. Um, but for anyone who loves games um, and weird ideas, uh, this is like a really great documentary about making video games, um, which is super fun. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, I was recipe testing a turkey leg, like Renaissance Fair size turkey mm -hmm. leg. Nice. Did you ever have those? Mm -hmm. yeah, I never you know. have. Sure. Oh. Yeah. E eating it at a, at a Disney World. Oh yeah, Disney World too. Yeah, get, eat, a, eat a big greasy turkey leg and then get on a ride. I know. <laughs> I'm just gonna get real sleepy, like Thanksgiving <laughs> sleepy on a ride. Um, but let me say, this was an ordeal. Because <laughs> first, it's hard to find turkey legs. Second, yeah, that's my first question. Uh, yeah, you got to go to Food Bazaar. Okay. Which is a little farther away from me, but I was able to find it. I was able to find it. Oh, uh, just saw. Um, in the chat, Kodiak just tried some fresh asparagus ice cream the other day. It was not bad. Oh. I would I would try that. I would try that. Uh, knife, sa knife Snail says, I've been wanting to try garlic ice cream. Ooh, I've never had that good. either. I want that. that uh, happy singing sandwiches. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you, Danelle, for subscribing for the 11th month in a row. Woo hey! Yeah, thank you. Uh, Liz says, I love those. Chris says, I love a turkey leg, can never finish it. Yeah, they are quite large. <laughs> mm, Ren Fair turkey leg. Oh, thanks, everybody, for your turkey comments. <laughs> I definitely should have had a snack before I got on the show. I know. I know. It's a trap. It's a trap. Lesson learned. Uh, this was breakfast the other day. It was uh, chorizo and chimichurri. Ah, what a photo. Ooh. And then I use the cooking oil that gets that comes out of that chorizo to yes, fry the egg. You oh, yeah. did. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get all the red stuff. Because chorizo's key ingredient to make it red is a natto seeds. Oh, um, that's what I'm makes so it red. I about that. I always, I kind of oh, had guessed maybe paprika. Which, which is also a, an additive too um, okay. for flavor. But a natto is that red oily hue because a natto is oil soluble. Oh, how about that? How about that? How about that? <laughs> How about that? Um, but if you would like some red eggs, you could just also do a pinch of paprika in your cooking oil right before okay. you fry an egg. So you can still get this this effect <laughs> without making chorizo. It's gorgeous. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of sausages in the lining. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so I was uh, smoking a lot of stuff in my grill for the first time in a long time yesterday. So my my little baby Weber grill, I had like a tiny like bell grill, you know, like a sidewalk <laughs> size. Um, it did not survive the winter. <laughs> Oh no! I know, but because the recipe development is my job, I get to write off a new grill. Yes, amazing. And it arrived, and I assembled it yesterday. And one of the first things I did was try to smoke as many things from the fridge that I'm not going to use. So there was a lot of carrots, there were peppers, there were onions, tomatoes. So these are smoked carrots with an oregano dressing, um, and a little bit kind of like a pesto-y pico de gallo situation. I was just putting everything in the food processor. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to get rid of it. How do you? How did you? Um, did you like boil the carrots or anything before you smoked them? Mm -mm, oh. mm -mm. And do they get tender or? They do. It only takes well, compared compared to meats, it takes uh, about an hour and a half. Uh, okay. Meats can be about you know, four to six hours or eight hours, depending on what you're trying to barbecue and stuff. But we'll get into that. <laughs> the, the, the carrots and tomatoes and goat cheese actually don't take very long. They can be 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how smoky you want to get stuff. Very uh, interesting. I'm glad this is relevant to our conversation can later you do as the, well. Did you do goat cheese with a hot smoke? No, cold and direct smoke. Okay. Yeah. I've never done any cold smoking. Um, not entirely sure how to set it up on my own burger. So. It's fun. There are a few techniques we can talk about that uh, when Please. we get to your get to your photos. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also more smoking. Uh, uh, I had a crazy amount of peppers in my fridge for some reason. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I was assigned a um, a pickled jalapeno dish, and then we ended up scrapping it, and so I just had all these jalapenos and red peppers and serranos. So what I'm going to do with this is I smoked it, and I'm going to make a hot sauce. <gasps> I love that idea. Yeah, gonna ferment it for like two days maybe, and then Ooh. um, and then add a lot of garlic because I can't live without garlic. <laughs> I I really like a garlic in a in a hot sauce. Me too. Actually, one of my favorite hot sauces is called Love Boat. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -mm. Yeah. It's from Connecticut, and it's a lot like um Cholula in texture, so it's a little thicker. Um, but they have an extra garlic flavor, Ooh, which okay. which I, I love. Try that. It's love on love. eggs. Yeah, it's called Love Boat. Okay. Love those. Yeah. <laughs> um, you also sent me some photos. We did! Which yes, I'm so did. excited about. Um, is there any particular one that you wanted to start with? No. I don't, I don't think, think so. so, no. Okay. At, let's... Your, at your leisure. Kick it off. Okay. Let's, what's going on here? So this is last year's uh, Green Garden. Whoa. So um, during quarantine, we got big into, like, let's grow vegetables. So we assembled these beds and we got a bunch of seedlings and this is um, mostly Swiss chard or the big yeah. boys. Uh, but I think mm. there's also there's also a lot of oregano in there. Yeah, so like on the rosemary. left, the left is the Swiss chard? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then I think so. Yeah. About like to it's about basil. midway through and then the big bushy pointy thing next to that is basil <laughs> and then rosemary and then oregano in the back. Fun. Wait, so you assembled the beds themselves too? Yeah. <gasps> You're so handy. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you're so handy. It was uh, it was pre-cut wood, and I did just whack it in you know, <laughs> with, a, with a rubber mallet. But I did swing the mallet. Cool. So, yes, yeah. You did it. So, yeah. what's the advantage of putting it in a bed than using the substrate below? So the uh, we had a tip from our next door neighbor who. Uh, is very into gardening and landscape design and everything. They had gotten their soil tested a Ooh. year or so ago, and there was lead in the soil, which is apparently very common in Brooklyn. Oh, and you didn't don't want to grow in that. Obviously, it would it would be bad Gets in your for food. food. Gets in your food. So uh, we assembled raised beds to grow all of our edible food. In, all of our edible food. All the edible stuff. All the edibles. <laughs> all like, of our edibles. We didn't want the dog to run outside and pee on our kale. Got it. That's a great point, yeah. actually. We would, yes. Yeah. So we have yeah. two raised beds, and then this year, which I can't. I guess. I guess when we sent you pictures, I didn't have it yet. We. Uh, I turned my my childhood red wagon into an <gasps> raised bed, and I was Cutie. Very, very proud of it. Yeah. I love that. That's a that's a really cool. Like it looks cute, um, but also very practical. Um, yeah. yeah. I love was... that there are, are probably a lot of other vehicles like that that could be adorable in the garden. Yeah. Well. And yeah. I think that like, 
we might chris has a big trunk mm -hmm. out there like a like a look, looks like a treasure chest we we may down the line look to convert that into a because yeah, it's pretty beat well. up anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a lot of it's very deep yeah i think we'd want to choose our plants for that reason right yeah, um, maybe grow big sunflowers in it or something yeah. oh kelly says that is why i don't have a garden doggies would be unkind to plants <laughs> try, kelly try a container garden there's a yeah. lot of stuff you can grow in containers it doesn't have you don't have to have the real estate for a raised an entire raised bed yeah we have a bunch of stuff in pots too like yeah oh Amazing. like what what kind of reading did you both do to get ready for this kind of project a lot of it's been trial and error. Oh. Um, <laughs> we we kinda, are obsessed it's, it's, with uh, Monty Don. What's that guy? Yeah, it's kind of like whenever we have a question, we, we look it up. And we're like, oh, God, like, can we grow corn? And then found out that if we want good corn, we should just buy it because of the way it pollinates. And because <laughs> yeah. they, they just shoot pollen at each other. And so you need that's why you have the corn in tight rows like that. I see. Evenly hitting each other. But if you have a couple in your backyard, they're not going to pollinate correctly. You're going to get weird mutant looking things with barely any kernels on them. So. That this explains is, a lot. The complete is, gardener by yeah. who? Monty Don. Monty Don. Monty Don. Britain's favorite gardener. Um, uh. And ours too. <laughs> my mom got me hooked on his TV show, um, Big Dream Small Spaces, which was another resource, honestly, was watching that show and seeing cool. him go into like gardens in the uk that were small um i mean some of these people have an odd idea of what small is but uh, <laughs> yeah it was really it's really cool he he just he just knows everything and yeah chris says uh oh my god i love him this show is great uh kelly says carly my dogs are 10 times the size of your friend <laughs> okay that's fair okay also um, i just murder plants bad oh <laughs> we well, have faith yeah, I think there are, there, you know, if, if you were, if you were like super interested in trying with something small, I would say you, you can't go wrong with trying to do an herb garden, like a little herb garden in pots. And you can do that. Um, you can do that on a windowsill. You could do it. On, we had it on a, a fire escape in our old place. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a little like LED grow light that you can get. There's like there's options and there's ways to experiment. And I think you have to be prepared to kill a lot of plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got confirmation from the UK. He's a good Monty. He's good Monty Don. Can confirm. Uh, <laughs> Jay Trophy's here in the chat. Welcome. We need hey, some. Hey Trophy. We have some good food plants that don't require a lot of light. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So they need some good food plants that don't require oh, a right. lot of light. Okay, that's interesting. Oh. So. Um, <laughs> no clue. I feel like a. Hmm. I feel like a plant Rosemary? like kale yeah. might be. Uh, might be better suited for like lower light. Um, anything like uh, dill likes shade, I think. And that's probably a good little starter too. Mm -hmm. um, I think dill, you have to directly sow it into whatever you're planning on growing it in. I don't think you can transplant it. Yeah. Sorry, I keep looking because I'm right by the window. I'm like, what do we have? Like what's <laughs> yeah. out there right now? Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, mint is is like pretty friggin' hard to kill. Although we did just- We did just kill it, kill but- <laughs> The other day. It, but it will come back. But it's already coming back. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's very resilient. Oh, um, you're actually growing some dill and kale thrives. Good, great. That's great news. <laughs> that's great, Trophy. You're on the right track. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the fun thing about the Swiss chard was that was like, that was growing really hardy into the fall. Yeah, we, Whoa. Were, we were eating a lot of Swiss chard because we just hack it back, eat it, and then more would grow. Yes, it's called cut and come again. <laughs> That's what it's called. And it's great. You take Amazing. the older outer leaves off of the plant, you eat those first, and then you know, you're looking to make sure that the center of your plant is still growing new, new leaves, and you just leave those until they get yeah. Big enough. Nice. And last year's kale harvest was com was entirely enjoyed by aphids. Yeah. Um, oh. Didn't, didn't really get to eat those, but I've learned how to fight them off uh, organically. So I am going to be eating some kale. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna eat some kale. Yeah, I got which by it's neem oil. You get neem oil. Neem oil. Neem. Yeah. So cool. Uh, it's, I'm spraying those the kale with the neem oil, and that should keep the aphids off. And I've been told that. Um, 
ladybugs will enjoy chomping down on some aphids. You you can buy those by the you hundreds. Can. It's yeah. true. <laughs> you can. We also have some flowers planted that are supposed oh, to attract yeah. mm -hmm. uh, beneficial bugs. We oh, have some wonderful. Sweet Allison planted. Is that, oh. Do we have stuff that's meant to attract parasitic wasps? Is that one of them? <laughs> what? No, because that different kind of, you know, not a bad bad wasp, despite the name. Uh, <laughs> despite the horrifying name. Yeah, they're a, they're a, they're a, they prey on some other obnoxious bug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, catching up here again, Kelly says, Mint is one of those, if you kill me, I will only come back stronger. True, they have the basil. That's true. Um, <laughs> they're like hydras. I'm very excited for this basil to, like, go off once it starts getting real hot. Ooh, you can make some basil simple syrup. You can make oh, pestos. Yeah, oh, yes. so much stuff. Uh, Chris says, yeah, they lay their eggs in the pests. <gasps> there it is. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. It's All pretty right. effective. Yeah, it's a real... Uh... <laughs> the Pokemon the Pokemon text. It's super effective. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Because <laughs> it lays its eggs in its enemies. <laughs> I'll lay my eggs in my enemies. <laughs> Hell yeah, sorry, Jen. sorry. Hell Don't yeah. apologize. Um, what is this gorgeous thing? Okay. This was this is a little project during uh during the winter. So it, this was something that we didn't make with our garden vegetables, but we could have we could. if mm -hmm. it was not dead of winter. And it's a it's a collard green melt. Ooh. Um, the recipe came from Turkey and the Wolf. In <gasps> New Orleans. Yes, I've always wanted to eat there. I so desperately want to go there. So this is one of their sandwiches. Their sandwich is like you have to like bow to it. It looks incredible. It's like a double decker. I modified it. It's just one <laughs> layer of rye bread toast. But um, yeah, the kale. Oh, sorry, this, the collard greens cook for a couple of hours. Um, really nice flavor base mm. that I've forgotten, <laughs> but can can look up. Is it smoky? Um, it's a little bit smoky. It's a little bit tangy. Tangy. Mm -hmm. And then you serve it with a like simple coleslaw Yum. and Swiss cheese. Mm -mm -mm. It's Let's so see. Good. Liz says, I count five chips. <laughs> uh, well, I've been calorie counting, believe it or not. <laughs> really? And that's Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I just, you know, I was, I went hard on snacks and wine when the pandemic sure. first hit. So I was yeah. just trying to, I, as you can see, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, depriving myself of anything. Just, <laughs> I like to try to eat in moderation. I've always wanted to go to Turkey and the Wolf because they had these, um, like, Thanksgiving hand pies that were like, they looked like Pillsbury Troaster Strudel, but they were um, savory. Oh, my God. I also just love their aesthetic. They all, like, wear trucker hats. Like, they're crazy. I, I really love them. I really love the aesthetic, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for any kind of repackaging of Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, yes, yeah. same. Yeah. Carly is most excited for the day after Thanksgiving. Me yeah. too. Yes, it's the best day. Yeah. Oh, I used to host a, um, so with my magazine, put an egg on it. When we could have events, we would have a gallery show called um, uh, Leftover Special. Oh so my you, God. It was an interactive art show where you bring your leftovers. Everyone could make sandwiches with the collective leftovers. And then we did nice photo shoots of all the sandwiches. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh my it was really God. fun. Oh my God, I want the world to be safe for that again. I know, so I really want to do it. That's incredible. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. My hero. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the collard green milk. Um, what is this beauty? <laughs> All right, this is, this, though it may look an unassuming sandwich, is my crowning achievement as a, as a barbecue um, enthusiast. Yeah, um, first so... impressions. I can already see that smoke line. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Something to be very proud of. Let me tell you, great smoke line, great bark. Very Ooh proud. So, yeah. So this is brisket. Um, this is my very first time smoking a full packer brisket, which means it was like 14 pounds of meat or something. Um, and <laughs> Yeah, it was It was just like, it, I wanted to do it as like the last part of the Christmas holiday. So I got up, I think at like 3 a.m. on New Year's Day. <laughs> um, what a way to start the new year. Yeah, man, exactly. Um, it's so, incredible. Well, my, so first, the brisket was, of course, brining in the fridge for 24 hours. Um, and then uh, applied the, the rub, 
you know, which is your brown sugar and your spices and mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I've also got a Weber grill, um, but I have a thing in it called a slow and sear, um, which is basically a steel um, basket that takes up like half of the, oh. of the kettle that has a, um, a water reservoir so that it separate it has this perfect separation of the heat source from where you put the meat yeah and that water reservoir uh really helps get the steam up in the smoke and helps it stick to the meat better nice um so and the other thing is it just like it has a really great um temperature control no i have a question for you when you're ready (laughs) what's that uh, I was wondering if that's is a lot of work. <laughs> every day, every day. It's I a choose, choice. Every day I choose to bother him. Um, is that something, do you think if someone didn't have access to that equipment, could, could you improvise something like the slow and sear with like a, you know, like an aluminum tray? Yes. There you you could. Yes. Yeah, you also don't need it. It just like, it, it makes my life so much easier as far as smoking stuff goes. Um, and a big part of that is it like, um it it just has this it really makes the temperature control so much easier i can i can get that smoker staying between 225 degrees and 235 degrees for Perfect. hours yeah hours which you need because like i said i started this at 3 a.m <laughs> so yeah uh just went out and uh, we have like a we had a little patio heater that I just kind of huddled oh. and um yeah smoke that sucker for until god i don't know remember. i think it was like ready to eat around like yeah it was i think it was ready to eat around 4 p.m that day Um, sounds right (laughs) yeah so um but yeah watched a lot of videos on how to slice a whole brisket because um the grains of the the meat run in opposite directions yes part which was news to me but i did it i got it good and that's because of the muscle fibers right Mm -hmm. yes muscle fibers yeah yeah we always want to cut against the grain part of the of the of the animal (laughs) the titty well, it's like the it's titty. Like, it's, like, <laughs> it's called a long titty. It's a long titty. Well, I mean to be—I mean to be kind of going down my arm and shoulder a little bit here. Um, but... That's called the auxiliary titty. Yeah, it's the auxiliary titty. Um, so yeah, and then the sandwich. You know, I made some—I made like a kind of a spicy vinegary barbecue sauce and mm. raw red onions and pickles and um, Martin's potato roll. And my fave i will I love... always get potato roll, the martin's potato roll i love them my yeah. fave yeah. i met i met the owner who was a very nice woman <gasps> mrs martin's <laughs> we love you very sweet very lovely um catching up here in the chat we got a hell yes of thanksgiving leftovers from kelly nice uh welcome to the chat ocho robo nice to see you best well, meal of the year we agree mm-hmm. thanksgiving Mm-hmm. Uh, Trophy says the week after Thanksgiving, eat a couple slices of ham on a plate. I also do that. Uh, throw some canberry on Sammy's. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, Bear Claw says I like to sous vide Packer Packer briskets. Oh sure, yeah, wow. that would have uh, really absolutely made this foolproof. <laughs> it would have made it uh, faster, I would say. But you that don't too. get that full smoke. Sure. Uh, uh, Trophy says fourteen pounds is quite a commitment. If it didn't work out. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrified. Well, that's why you. That's why but you I've been, like I've been, worked up to exactly. This. I have yeah. been. I've been smoking meats and barbecuing for a very long time now, and I was like, <laughs> and like looking about all the stuff about like when to pull it to to wrap it. Um, mm. You know, uh, I w- I was like, because you can't just go by the temperature. You kind of go gotta go by the feel a little bit. And you gotta see if the fat's rendered on top. There's all these little things that oh, make yes. it very unscientific. Um, but uh, I think I got it just right. It yeah. was incredible. It was really good. Uh, Kelly, yeah, was sorry, Kelly is asking time. us, have you, have y'all ever had P- Baltimore pit beef sandwich? Yes. I have not. Chris uh, is from the Baltimore area. And I've, oh! and I've, I've cooked it several times. And in fact, my first time making it was a disaster. Oh no. Um, because it's to talk about like how it long, long I've been doing it. It took a long time. It was like, I think I'm, so I'm 37 now and I think I made pit beef for the first time when i was 22 or 23 um and i got the wrong cut of beef for a starter uh i wanted to get a top round 
and I think I got a bottom round. Oh, yeah, that's different fat distribution. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it took forever to cook, and then when I finally pulled it, it was way too chewy to eat as a sandwich. Nobody oh, could no. sink their teeth into it. But I did it again uh, more recently to great results. Served it with the classic tiger sauce. Um, What's in a tiger sauce? It's barbecue sauce and... Um, chocolate chips. Chocolate chips. Yeah. What? It's, no, um, it's a, uh, like a horseradish sauce. Oh, like, cool. Like a green yeah. horseradish sauce and the barbecue sauce mixed together. And uh, Got confirmation from Kelly. Yeah, fuck yeah, get that tiger sauce. Boy! Uh, let's I can make see. that again. I want it now. Johnny I says... Now. I know, I want it. I've never had it. Maybe that's a thing we do if we, ever, if we reunite. We Wait, yeah. yes! We should do that yeah. together. We definitely should. One thing about the pit beef is there's it's just salt and pepper on the outside. I think yeah. maybe garlic if you want. But like, I'm into that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Johnny says, oh, hell yeah, pit beef is the jam. Uh, so much good food in and around Baltimore that never gets noticed. True, true, true. I want to learn more about, about that area's food. Uh, and then a follow-up here from Bear Claw about the sous vide. Uh, brisket. You can pre-smoke and post-smoke, but I like a light smokiness, so I only do it after. Um, also, there's just something to flex on a 48-hour brisket. <laughs> Agreed. I agree with that. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, what an accomplishment. I, I, this is a beautiful sandwich. <laughs> um, woo, risque. Uh, Let me tell you, I've dropped many pizzas into grates. <laughs> I... I'm certain that if I tried, I would. Mm. I haven't. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, so tell I've me had, about I've it. What is this? I've plenty of other pizza disasters on the grill, but none, none actually gone. You've the... dropped pizza in an oven. Oh, yes. In an oven. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah but not Oh, no. Oh. So what's going on with this pizza? Uh, it's pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I don't know. It's a pretty picture. It was a nice day. I love grilling pizza so much. Mm. Much faster than brisket, of course. Yes. Um, but yeah, Only like... Only 13 hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I really love grilled pizza. Um, I, I like a little bit of smoke uh, mm -hmm. getting on that crust. And it kind of it clings to the sauce in a nice way, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, I used to... This was on a menu at an old restaurant that I worked at. We would grill pizzas live, which was mm. a little difficult, you know, when we were workshopping the dough uh, when it wasn't quite uh, oh, man. stable. But then we, we got into a workflow of dressing the pizzas beforehand and then putting them in the fridge to set so they were a little bit more solid. Nice. That's really smart. Yeah, whenever I have to do these. That's very smart. For a, for a group, <laughs> I roll out all the doughs and stack them and uh in the fridge and it, it's just like oh that's yeah, a good you, life you hack get real fast at throwing these things out yeah where did you what's your pizza dough recipe uh this one is bought from fresh direct oh okay yeah i i am still working on a pizza dough recipe i'm not quite satisfied with my results yet I have been really getting into the King Arthur flour pan pizzas, so not on the grill, um, but they have a lot of cast iron um, based pizza recipes and they're being developed by, I don't remember his real name, I think it's Andrew J, but he goes by Word Loaf on Twitter and Instagram. He's just a genius, like a food science genius. That's awesome. um, but I highly, highly recommend the King Arthur baking uh, cast iron pizza recipe okay. and the Detroit pizza dough love, recipe. Love oh, pizza. love Detroit pizza. My goodness. Because you get all the crispy edges. You you spread the cheese all the way to where the the metal meets the, the dough. Oh, wow. And you get the burnt crust with the yeah. cheese. So good. So good. Um, do you have any other secrets for like grilling pizzas? Like it doesn't take very long, right? No, it sure doesn't. I mean, the, the big thing, I mean, the main thing that you do is that you, you slap that dough onto your hot, gr so you, you set up a, a two zone or a three zone if you really want to get meticulous about it, fire, which means you have a hot zone of, of coal, which basically means like if you get your hand like this close from the grate, you should only be able to hold it there for like a second before you have to take yeah. it away. That's kind of how I measure it. And then you have a cooler zone where it's like if you put your hand on top, you you could kind of handle. Pretty it. warm. Your Baltimore yeah. accent is coming out. <laughs> oh? Yeah. I didn't notice. <laughs> I know. I know. Didn't either. Um, <laughs> now I'm gonna be self conscious. Oh, well. oh Thank you. That's no! A lot of work. Ah, every day. <laughs> ah. Um. So you uh you stretch that dough out on um like I on like a like a pan 
just like a, a, a greased pan. Mm -hmm. And then you slap the dough on the hot side of the grill, let that cook a little bit. And then um, you flip it um, right. to the cooler side. And that's right, you do want it to be a little bit of heat. Um, and then you, um, you dress the cooked side of the pizza and then you slide it back over to finish put the top down so that your cheese melts and stuff oh yeah i gotta put that top down <laughs> gotta get that cheese all melty because you don't want that fully cooked dough and then like a block of cheese on top like that's not cheese. melted yeah i mean i, I do it. i do love cheese i will I eat, it. eat it yeah but you do want like that melty melty good texture mm -hmm. um catching up here uh chris says i remember you talking about this on rude talks Sorry, yeah. We did talk about pizza. yeah, we talked about yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> Joe and I oh. said we were going to talk about grilling pizza, and then never did. Never did. Whoops. Uh, Ocho Robo says I tried to do this once and ended up with a black frisbee. No, no. it was either maybe too hot or uh, on there too long. Or but both. I hope yeah, you try again. <laughs> try again. Try oh, again. Yeah, I'll you should try again. Now. <laughs> um, Trophy wants to try to make a pizza on the fire pit now. Oh, oh I bet that would be great. I believe in you. Um, yeah, the original technique that I found was from Barbecue USA by Stephen Reichlin, and it's from the, I forget the name of the restaurant um, that he, oh gosh, we went there, we went there for Valentine's Day one time. Oh, Scott, um, oh yeah, Scotto, Scotto's. Fresco by Scotto. Cool. Maybe, I don't know, anyway, it's their grilled pizza recipe, and that dough has always been successful when I actually make it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think... So I, for years, I was only doing the Mark Bittman uh, food processor pizza dough. It's yeah. very, very easy. You just put it all in at once. And then I, I, I started branching out. I did the Roberta's pizza recipe that's okay. in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just been really stuck on this King Arthur recipe. Man. I just love it so they're much. So, they're very solid. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Kelly, <laughs> wash your hands in a zinc with some water. <laughs> Is that the accent? I think Did that's I more. Uh, that sounds Philly. Yeah, that's like that's like I was gonna say uh, Pittsburgh. Your mom uh, says Warsh though. Wa <laughs> yeah, we do say Warsh, but that's like mom's not from Baltimore; she's from West Virginia. Ah, I had a, I had a roommate who said uh, who said Warsh, but she was from like middle of nowhere California, which is huh. strange language. Language is a there. gift. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Pork Chop Express is asking, is that a Weber kettle? Yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, they're great. They're, I agree. Uh, get, get a big enough one where you can uh, set up a hot zone and a cool zone and you can actually smoke stuff. Oh, fantastic. It was an I extremely know. generous gift. Birthday for both of us slash housewarming gift for my parents. Oh, mommy diddy. Yay, it thank you. It was very nice. They hated so our sweet. old apartment and when we moved oh, into this yeah. one, they were so happy. So <laughs> happy for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this. Thanks for sharing your pizza secrets with us. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having our pizza. Did you <laughs> did you ever have Defares or did you ever go embark oh. on that? Um, so there's like, you know, it's a famous place in Brooklyn. It's mm -hmm. way out there in Midwood. And um, oh, I the, think I've seen a video about this. The 70 year old uh, man, he, he's been making pizza for so long that he can just reach into the oven and grab the pizza with his hands. Oh, wow. I know. I want to get incredible. there someday. <laughs> you I'll just be like, ow, ow, <laughs> ow. <laughs> Hand on the cheese. I'm not there yet. Drag obviously. it out. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Oh my goodness. And then finally, we have this lovely drink. Oh, yeah. So this is just showing off, you know, using the herbs from the garden. This is this was in our old apartment, but that, that was my massive thing of mint uh, on that the was windowsill. A, that was a, yeah, that was a fire escape. Yeah, so that's the window looking out to the fire escape, and I believe that is a mojito that I that I made. Mm. And, uh, yeah. and a mojito is you muddle the mint with some sugar. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. And then and what's the lime. liquor? Rum. Rum. White rum, right? Yeah, if you want, whatever. I. <laughs> uh, yeah, typically white rum, but um, you know, I like to use like uh, a, a more flavorful one than a Bacardi. Mm. I think Bacardi just tastes like gasoline. It does. <laughs> I have bad memories of Bacardi in college. I like thought I was a I thought I was hot shit and like drank a mug of it at a party and then oh. regretted everything. Oh. Regretted life. 
regretting Oof. getting up that day. Like, it was the worst. My first drink was Bacardi Limon and, and Sprite. Um, <laughs> poured into a 20 ounce bottle of Sprite. Uh, wow. At a senior week. <laughs> my first drink. Good God. My first drink was Chris used to make me oh, yeah. like chocolate white Russians. When we when we were um, when we were planning our wedding. Because weddings are work. It's hard work. We, uh, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah, it's a choice. The, 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 weddings the, are a choice. <laughs> Marriage is a choice. And the woman who ran the catering was a nightmare to deal with. And oh every no. Every time we, we'd have some stupid stressful thing with this idiot, and he'd be like, "You know what? Okay, I'm ready to try a cocktail." And I need really. To stress, I need to stress that I drink. was. I was not, I was not, I was very, like, in my head about being a bridezilla. It, it's actually a really toxic culture. That, it is. Like, that makes women feel crazy. It's really not. Gaslighting. It's really not sure. nice. Like, everyone's like, is she going to be a bridezilla? Is she going to be a bridezilla? I'm like, no, I, I just want, I just want this to be over so that I can be <laughs> married. Like, I just want to be married. And, like, I, like, I didn't have, like, a. I didn't have like a huge list of demands or anything. I was like pretty easygoing, but she like she dragged us out to Jersey for a meeting that could have been an email. Oh no, like I hate lost, that. She lost everything that we had given her. She was terrible. Oh um, no, it's fine. But then we got handed. But on the day of, we got handed over the Mater D. Christian, Christian. we love oh, you. We miss you. <laughs> we miss you. It's been ten years too long. Bonded for life. I love him. <laughs> this man was just an angel who was always taking care of stuff like that's hospitality man yeah i love it what a sweetie pie yeah oh, that's so, why so i do what i Car do so carly didn't drink and then she needed something that was very sweet going down so it was essentially a white russian with chocolate and milk fun uh, yeah that's, <laughs> that's so really fun and then oh. and then on the wedding day itself like our particular like bar setup did not have cocktails as part of the offerings like it was like beer and wine mm -hmm. um, and uh but i was like listen it's for the bride can you please make a white russian with some chocolate syrup in it or like some <laughs> yeah we got it got it for you it's very sweet yeah. it's very nice uh know, people are <laughs> sharing their first drinks in the chat now oh, Shmoo. I love it. Shma says chugging bacardi green apple out of the bottle was the first time i got really sick oh, from drinking i'm so sorry yikes oh uh, yeah, light rums can be way better than Bacardi, says Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris says, dragon fruit rum here, yuck. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, knife snail. My first drink was Jack Daniels and cherry Coke, and now I can't drink either of them. I was going to say, that doesn't sound bad. I, I actually would drink that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Kelly, Smirnoff Ice, bro. <laughs> uh, I drank plenty of those in college. I, I got iced many times, actually. <laughs> Oh, that was not part of our college culture, thank God. <laughs> I, um, it was awful. I one time, uh, my friends Katie and Meredith and I drank an entire bottle of apple pie oh, liqueur. Oh, so apple much pie sugar. Apple liqueur on ice. Ooh. Yeah. The Ooh. entire, we drank the whole that's just, thing. That's, I yeah. felt great. Oh, God, that's just like, yeah, head ruining syrup. It was yeah. delicious. There's also, yeah. there's also an apple pie moonshine that I think they sell in a mason jar. Yeah, that I would I would try it. It's fucking good. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah, it's it's a it's a sweet booze. All right, continuing here. Trophy says there's a short while I liked a one to one mix of creme de menthe and chocolate liqueur. That I would fuck nice. with that. That sounds nice once in a while, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I couldn't do that all it's the like, time. Yeah, I, I like I like Bailey's at Christmas time. And yeah, never yeah. Ever um, else. Bear Claw's first drink was a vodka and iced tea. Let's not talk about how old I was. <laughs> You're funny. Mm. Uh, Kelly had the actual caffeinated four loco during college years, and that was real bad. Oh. Cheers to you. Cheers, Good. cheers, cheers. Oh, and you remember the apple pie moonshine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny's was hypnotic. <laughs> oh gosh, sure. I think I've only ever had that once. Is that spelled at a club. with a Q? Of course it's spelled with a Q. Yeah. yeah, it's like this blue genie in a bottle looking thing. Oh my god. Yeah, Very funny. Oh, Ocho has it in their fridge right now. Hey! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Wait, Bear Claw, you have a recipe for apple pie moonshine? <gasps> oh, wow. What? I'm curious about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm curious too. Are you distilling it from 
Scratch, are you taking? I don't know how moonshine works. Everclear. Well, they call it moon. Apple pie moonshine is not apple pie moonshine. moonshine. The stuff I'm thinking of yeah. not actual moonshine. Correct. <laughs> it is important it is, it is to rob me of any cred for drinking genuine moon, moonshine. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because that's all the stuff you sent to me. Okay. Right. And now everybody can see our big heads again. <laughs> there are big heads. Big heads are back. Welcome back to our big heads. Um, I don't need to start a fire for a drink. That's so funny. Uh, Same. Hip, hypnotic and Hennessy turns green. I didn't yeah. know that. Cool. Mm -hmm. The Hulk. I think oh, is what that, that what it's called? called. <laughs> the Hulk. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a million green cocktails called that, but I've, I've, I'm familiar with God, it. God, you know, my biggest, my biggest drink regret is how many, and I, I'm so sorry because I only, I don't, the, the name I know for them is not great, but it's oh, when okay. you put. Oh, wait, you can call it a boiler maker. Boiler maker. There you go. It's, but it specifically was uh, Guinness, mm -hmm. the shot of Jack Jameson in, in a thing of Guinness. I drank like three of those in one night. Yeah. And I was like 20 pounds lighter than I am now. <laughs> yeah, I and was. I lived. Yeah, I guess a Boilermaker's whiskey and the beer. There was a period of my life where I was into those drop drinks. Yeah. So sure not just that, um, but like uh, there was one called a cactus cooler. We did Ooh. tequila in like a pineapple-y orange soda situation. Okay. Um, it's still a headache, you know, because it's all this sugar. Oh, we've got a little bit of an interruption here. Uh, Chris Olson has redeemed taste test. Hey, oh. what does that mean? Taste test means I grab something from the fridge <laughs> and uh, put it in my mouth and okay. <laughs> tell you what's happening or, uh, you know, continue talking. Uh, so the first thing I grab is actually... <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. <laughs> do you want me to they, do this with you in solidarity? I have you don't know, have to. Okay. <laughs> it's just, I mean, thousand points in the chat. Thank you, Chris Olsen, for spending them. <laughs> You're my queen. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it's in there, folks. It's in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, wow. In a fancy little crystal glass. <laughs> Agitate. <laughs> Doing a little cement Wasn't mixer. that on a TV show? Was, was it, it on, was it on like step by step or something like that? I buy it. Where people would just do that and then shake their heads. I buy it. I uh, I would do it, frankly. That was. <laughs> do you like chocolate syrup? No. <laughs> See, I like it. That's why, like, do you need help? I'll do it with you. I don't like sweet things very much. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish that was true for me. Oh my! Well, ah. you're very brave. Let's read these ingredients for a second. Uh, high fructose corn syrup. Sure. Number one. Uh, corn syrup. <laughs> so that's the first and second ingredient. Middle fructose. Um, water, cocoa, sugar, uh, potassium sorbate to maintain freshness. Mm -hmm. uh, xanthan gum, salt, mono antiglycerides, polysorbate 60, vanillin, artificial flavor, and that's it. That's not so bad. Gluten free, I did not know. There you go. Not sponsored. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hershey's just happened to be the thing that I grabbed today. Thank you, Chris Olsen, for uh, <laughs> redeeming your taste test. Uh, let's see. Bear Claw says, we had a game where everyone would pick an alcohol and put in a shaker and everyone would get a shot. Whoa. Whoa. Like a suicide at oh. a soda machine? Oh, my, Whoa. That's, that's, oh uh... my head hurts just thinking about that. I know. I know. Oh, my goodness. Um so everybody, um, if you liked that previous segment of the show, we were looking at photos, like please do tag me on Instagram and Twitter, share your cooking photos, your memes, the things you're proud of. We'd love to root for you and uh, talk about the things that we learned from maybe our cooking fails. Cause even I have mistakes in the I kitchen. Don't it. I, don't it. <laughs> I can do no wrong in your eyes, I think. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> but um, for, the, for the next couple, I guess, um, parts of the show for like, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. We'd love to answer your questions. Uh -huh. So today's topic was yard to table, mm -hmm. specifically um, things that you grow in a windowsill, in your garden, in a bed, um, and what you do with it. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please sound off in the chat about yard to table cooking. Um, but so we talked a little bit about E easy beginner plants for people. Um, mm -hmm. So what about for people who don't have the backyard? 
Mm -hmm. Like what, what is something that they could take on that is easy to start, uh, low maintenance, uh, dip your toe in. <laughs> I mean, basil uh, will be very rewarding over this course of the summer. You can, you can grow that on a windowsill or a fire escape and just like cut it back hard. It grows back twice as many um, <laughs> leaves Re like when it's in the prime of summer it grows back very quickly and big and you're just going to be enjoying pesto all summer yeah i can you hand me the little rubber my little rubber plant actually looks a little sad but yeah the little one or the big the, the little, big one the big one i want to sort of it's helpful to know kind of where to to cut a plant oh hello hello this is my rubber plant and she is the first uh success story for me with pruning and the, the principles that apply to this plant also apply to a lot of herbs especially basil so oh. you basically are looking for a point on the plant where you have multiple shoots happening you can see there cool so you see how right here I feel like have, that we have a visual aid this yeah is you have one shoot here and then you have another shoot there so if this is your basil plant, you would look for a spot on your basil plant that looked like this with the two, or basically it's like a trident shape. Mm -hmm. You would cut here, and then that would put the energy into growing out these two. Oh. And then you get a bushier plant that way. So instead of it getting leggy, which is what we call plants that uh, have very long stems. <laughs> leggy, just... which I love. This just get their leggy. feet in the air, just really leggy. <laughs> yeah, like this is getting, like this, these are leggy. This one leggy. This is leggy. Okay, this is one of the original, it. but this is where you can see that I was pruning it. Yeah. Okay. So now oh, I can see the back. dry parts. Yeah, cool. Uh -huh. So um, so that's how you trim most, er most herbs, uh, I would say. All and right. It's, it's true of a lot of plants that you look, you're looking for that like trident shape. You cut the middle. It forces these two to grow more, and you just keep doing that, and it'll get nice and bushy and full. Yeah, and with basil in particular, you also want to pinch off flowers. Um, mm. I'm trying uh, to think of like because once it once yes. it starts growing flowers, it's signaling that it is uh, now ready to be sexually active, <laughs> and it doesn't want to grow anymore. And we say no, 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 and we no, 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 no. We, we pinch, you just pinch it off, it's pinch it off, easy. and then it's like, all right, fine. I guess I'm a child again, and it keeps growing <laughs> leaves, which we eat. Oh I'm, my goodness! I'm trying to think if there are like. A, other veggies that I would try growing indoors. I have had a lot of success with scallions. I which, bet. Which are, um, you just get your scallions from the store and you save that bottom inch and a half, that root, um, mm -hmm. that white part, and you could stick it in some water, like in a shot glass, like fill up the shot glass only halfway and you submerge that and change the water every two days and it will just start growing again. That's very cool. And so I've been able to plant those in, in a little windowsill thing oh, after nice. propagate, propagating them in the jars and, and stuff. That's so every time I have scallions, cool. it's That's really cool. very cool. And those are, scallions are pretty much evergreen, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter um, what season it is. You can just keep growing them. That's amazing. The, that's the other cool thing about growing plants indoors is like a lot. Of, so I don't know that, I can't say this unequivocally for food, but for a lot of house plants, if you look up advice online, it'll say like, oh, well, in the winter, they're dormant. That's not necessarily true because your mm. plant's inside and it doesn't know what time of year it is. It like, doesn't. That rubber plant was growing all through the winter. <laughs> um, I really like, hold on, I'll get this book. <laughs> Liz says, abstinent plants only in this house. That's right. <laughs> oh, we got a couple questions in the chat after you show us this book, which is very cool. I love Ooh. this book. It's called Don't Repot That Plant. What? And by, it's by Will Creed. Will Creed, who is, we found him online by Googling Plant Doctor New York. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's really good for giving you advice on growing things indoors because um, there's different rules than the rules that botanists are telling you about that are studying how plants grow in their natural habitat. Um, mm -hmm. I really, really recommend it. Tells you how to prune things, tells you how to propagate things. It's great. Oh, we got a reading list for the for this uh, stream. This is amazing. We got homework for everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a question from Schmas. Has anyone had luck with composting? I guess that's kind of a table to yard, LOL. But yes, I think it's relevant to the food system cycle that you are creating yeah. when you grow stuff. 
We have a compost bin. Uh, it has yet to produce dirt that we can use. Uh, yeah. We didn't really pay very close attention to the mix of, I believe, uh, what, brown, like nitrogen based, brown and, and green matter. Carbon so it's based. your like your woody, your dead woody stuff, um, and your your yard trimmings um, versus your, you know. Um, leftover onion bits and stuff yeah what we are specifically working with is a tum like a tumbler a compost tumbler so it is in a plastic barrel that you that you spin like once a day mm -hmm. um and what we're gonna try to get things to break down a little faster is to see if we can dig up some worms yeah uh, so some worms. in the dirt and like throw them in there i've actually had a little bit of success with yeah. a handful of worms in a plastic container, like a to-go, like where you would see um, cashews or dried fruit in like that snap close. Yeah. Square. I had like a very, very small one with just a handful of worms and um, they really sped things up. And this is actually how I sprouted a lot of seeds. So That's so cool. I would throw like tomato seeds, bell pepper seeds, um, lemon seeds, and they would just start sprouting in there. And the, the worms just love tangling into the roots <laughs> of stuff. Um, so that's like one little way, but um, I definitely make too much uh, for that, like for yeah. that little thing. That's very um, cool, though. But luckily, here in New York, we have a lot of programs. So yes. we have community gardens. We have farmer's markets where you can drop off your compost. I know not, not a lot of you live in New York. <laughs> but, um, but just bragging, just humble bragging. <laughs> <about the> city. <laughs> but um, there might be other programs that we just don't know about because we're not local. Yeah. Um, and so do you know how um, the city was, um, they had a false start with composting, like apartment composting? Did you know we had a program, but yes. they uh, were the just brown, the, we, brown, the brown containers. Yeah, containers. so there was such a backlash that um, they kind of abandoned it. But oh. um, very quietly, they're going to restart it. But you okay. have to opt in by calling 311. Oh, okay. Ooh, I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think... There's certain things that you have to have, like, kind of commercially composted. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Some stuff won't work back there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think like a lot of compostable like food containers yeah. and stuff or straws, things like that, you don't want to try to do in the backyard. No, because it would take forever. Yeah. <laughs> take yeah. forever. I don't how, have enough worms. How, how often are you turning your compost? I'm trying to turn it every day. Cool. Because that's the, that's, the, that's the beauty of the tumblers. I don't have to get in there and like physically <laughs> turn over the pile. Do you talk to it? <laughs> I do. I I'm not thinking it. about I wouldn't it. talk to it. I talk to everything out there, though. Oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. I'm fine. Um, Shma says I just started Bokashi, and the food waste I'm saving is nuts. Yeah, there. I just make a lot of food waste in general. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's crazy how much food waste I make. Um, we have another question here from Chris. How about when I accidentally let a zucchini get gigantic? It's really funny you say that because did you know there's a holiday in August called leave a zucchini on your neighbor's porch day? <laughs> oh my God, I love that. <laughs> Because zucchini overproduces and it usually shocks every farmer that grows it. They're like, oh, good God, that one's gigantic. Or I have too many bushels. And so they'll just sneak it on a neighbor's porch and leave it. <laughs> I love that. Great. I love that. Yeah, that's really funny. Um, Glad we're not growing zucchini. Have, yeah, have you had any surprise, like, things that you found in the underbrush? Like, oh, crap, that's huge. <laughs> well, yeah, we so we planted, in general, I would say, like, volume has been a surprise a yeah. surprising thing not understanding how large things would grow yeah, that, yeah, we had like five it. jalapeno plants Didn't yet that. last year that really were doing well producing and i was like keeping on top of pruning them and so they were really fruiting beautifully and like turned into like full-on trees they would become trees they became woody really fast yeah. by the end of the season they were trees Whoa. Um, it was oh. crazy um this year we're trying to <laughs> this year we're trying tomatoes and uh, I was being helped by a really great woman named Linda who worked at the garden center in Red Hook that I went to. And she, I was like, I need stakes for the tomatoes. And she's like, oh, here. And she showed me like a metal cage. And I was like, oh, I don't have, I don't have space for a cage. I just need stakes. And she's like, well, how many do you have? And I said, I have six. And she's like, it sounds like you have a lot of space. <laughs> and I was like, oh. 
okay, I don't. Okay, well, show me the biggest stakes you have. Thank you. Bye. And like, <laughs> so now, where? Well, I'm in the process of trying to do. I've discovered since buying these plants and putting them in the be the beds that there are determinate tomato plants that grow to a certain size and indeterminate potato, potato oh, tomato, tomato plants that could grow to whatever size oh. they feel like. And we, of course, got all the kinds that grow indeterminately. Six different types of tomatoes. Six different ones. Uh, just to say... I was grieving, you see, because I was trying takes... to grow tomatoes from seed and it didn't work out. Oh, yeah. Um, we so we got these seedlings. There's six of them. Oh, no. Trying to get them to train up Like five-foot tall sticks. <laughs> That's and so funny. Apparently, you can do this by, by really aggressively pruning the side branches, leaving a single vine, leaving enough uh, leaves so that it can photosynthesize, and then of course pinching at the side shoots, which is on a tomato, if this is, if this is the vine, uh -huh. <laughs> and then you have like another full size branch here, and then you get like a little baby like there, <laughs> which, and you gotta pinch that out. <laughs> Carly is training the tomato plant that there is some sort of predator <laughs> eating at it near the ground, and it must grow higher to escape. That's what you're doing. That's amazing. And you just answered Trophy's question about pruning tomatoes. Great. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, see, Trophy. We've never done know. it before. <laughs> but we have flowers, so we we'll see. we got flowers. Very excited. They just popped up this week. Oh, cute. Chris That's also says six is too many for two people. I know. I don't know how many of these are going to work, though. <laughs> you're just going to start a tomato CSA. And yeah. Just barter. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I want to make some tomato sauce. We got it. We, one of them is a San Marzano. Oh, um, you can so, get into canning. Yeah. Because yeah. canning yeah. lasts for a year. So mm -hmm. you can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely want to make my own tomato sauce. So. Um, oh, LT, welcome to the chat. The topic for today was yard to table. So we're talking about growing stuff in your own yard or in your windowsill and eating it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Bear Claw. You sent your apple moonshine recipe. Oh, to oh, me. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, yeah. So cool. Uh, LT, do they still make houses with porches for the zucchini uh, discussion earlier? Um, they do some parts of Brooklyn, but not most of the apartments here. Not most. I think it would be yeah. a stoop. We have a zucchini on a stoop. stoop. Oh, yeah. Tomatoes it are big over producers. Sorry? I said it is weird to see a porch in Brooklyn. You occasionally do. I'm like, who transported? You got to drive out there. <laughs> who transported this house from Connecticut? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, totally. Uh, Ocho says, my tomato plants last year got so big, it snapped itself in half because it was so top heavy. Oh, no. Yeah, Banana. yeah. I think I'm going to have to. So right now, like I said, steaks. it's just the steaks. I think we'll probably have to add more steaks and maybe some some horizontal lines mm. that help, like, kind of make a grid. We're going to see. That, <laughs> that, said, that said, if you are smarter than me and you get a determinate tomato plant i'm told they grow very well in a pot in a container oh. so you can have a single tomato plant like a sane person and they will top out at a certain height yeah all right they, yeah yeah that's a good to know the difference between determinate and indeterminate because i had no idea there were two kinds and um, it says it on the tab in the <laughs> soil which i now know <laughs> now you know no, know. no wait, this is all a learning experience for all of <laughs> exactly, us this is great exactly. um yeah make all the sauces for your friends oh kelly kelly has a good one here rude tomatoes of canning <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh, Trophy says, last time we grew tomatoes, I did a bit of pruning, and the plant took over the whole yard, but did not produce any fruit. Oh, no. Okay. Um, we have a question here from Gwem, who is in the UK. Have you considered keeping chickens? No. no. They stink. <laughs> they it would be stink. so loud here. It's also, I think it's illegal. <laughs> I think Brooklyn. it might be illegal in, the, yeah. in, in New York. They stink, and they, they're, they're not intelligent. Yeah. And okay. we have a lot of feral cats that uh, are in this backyard and I don't want to see a dead chicken in the chicken yard. operation would take over the entire yard. Yeah. And I like to look at the pretty flowers instead. Yeah. I know that there are chickens at the Onderdonk House, which is a venue that is on the border of Queens and Brooklyn. I think oh, they're on the cool. Queens. So it's like a whole yard that has both Queens and Brooklyn in it. And yeah. I think on the Queens side is where they have all the chickens <laughs> fenced in. And they're very well protected. They don't roam the property because mm -hmm. we've got all sorts of animals here in Brooklyn. <laughs> Like yeah, besides the, the cats, there's possums. There's, there's yeah, possums. I was, uh, <laughs> I was out in the back and I saw 
the possum and its face was just like barely lit by the <coughs> light of the house and I was like that cat is fucked up and then I realized it was a possum <laughs> Oh, man. Um, let's see. I think we'll take one more question. LT, can you really make potatoes and other veggies from human stuff, like from the Martian, or is that just sci-fi? <laughs> I actually, um, I have a surprising uh, <laughs> anecdote about this. Oh, goody. Is, I, <laughs> first of all, spoiler, thank you, I never saw the movie. <laughs> Second of all, uh, I went to visit NASA Kennedy a couple years, like five years ago. Uh, I was on a press junket to watch one of the um, SpaceX launches, which was really cool. And so they parade all of the scientists in the in the in the press room to talk about all their all their projects that are on every launch. And one of them was growing lettuce in space. Um, the program is called NASA Veggie. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. It is wow. run by Dr. Massa. She is an incredible woman. Um, and someone asked this question and they said that we wouldn't try that in the space station <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it's an open environment and people are like floating around and you would, so, uh, a lot of, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you would inhale that immediately if you were up there. Um, I do know that the substrate on Mars is very, very similar to the substrates in desert Arizona. So mm. they've been trucking a lot of that um, sand and rock from Arizona to Florida to see if they can grow with it. And so far, no. <laughs> um, but the idea is that they can break up that stuff with robots and have them 3D print houses before we get there. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, whoa. That's that's beyond That's potatoes right. yeah shit. so not necessarily potatoes but houses houses. Um, houses and um right now they are they are successful with growing lettuce in space in zero gravity space um tomatoes will be the next thing they try and then they'll go to potatoes but currently wow. no research stands behind the potatoes and the poop yet <laughs> everything seems to be working with vertical farming and um black light and drip systems um, it's up to you to get out into space yeah we just need to <laughs> need to develop these programs <laughs> oh um but uh we are nearing the end of the show already i can't believe how quick that, that was, was. i know i know i just love hanging out with you two yeah. but it is time my chat for our really fun chopped exercise are you two ready for this yes. ready Yes. Okay, friends, let's pretend we're on Chopped. If you don't know this TV show, there's a basket with four mystery ingredients in it, and chefs have to use them to make a dish. In our case, you, the chat, will tell us what's in that basket. So please shout out an ingredient for us to put in the basket. The first four will be the ones we use. Be quick about it, and I'm sorry if we don't do your ingredient. Um, there are no wrong answers. Purpose of the exercise is think about how far those ingredients are going to go, and maybe it might inspire you for your next meal. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I'll go through each of the ingredient. Ing I'll go through each of the ingredients individually, um, but just start feeling free to tell us how you combine two, three, or all four. Like there's no pressure. Uh, imagine that you have a basic pantry and all the tools and time you need. Uh, just remember, feature stuff in the basket. Let's go. Oh my. <laughs> okay, Fitz Murphy with green chilies, number one. Okay. Gwem with leftover turkey. <laughs> okay. Liz with American cheese. Oh. Great. And Schmoss with moonshine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Sounds, sounds like a shot in a sandwich to me. I know. Uh, yeah. Yes, we could do that. We could yeah, do that. Yeah, I would absolutely turn this into a melty sandwich. I think it's a, if it's American cheese, it has to be melty. Yes. Yeah. A turkey melt sounds really good. Ooh, what if it's like a spicy um, turkey melt? <coughs> yeah. Or we do a green chili moonshine, or redistill it with the green chili to make like a, a like a corn whiskey with sure. the green That's chili. That's very cool. You yes. could also, if you if um, let's say let's assume the turkey was smoked. Um, you know, we talked about smoking stuff. Um, maybe uh, you can take that uh, carcass, um, maybe some of the skin, some of the fat, and you can fat wash your whiskey <gasps> yes! and get some of that turkey flavor in your whiskey, maybe even with your chili if you really, if you want to infuse that too, mm. and you can have um, turkey shots. I would, <laughs> yeah. try to make, I would try to make or a weird turkey old -fashioned. hot pie. 
And I would Ooh. use the moonshine in the crust the way you use vodka. Yes, yes. Um, oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, because it evaporates so quickly and it would leave you with a flaky crust. That is yeah. great thinking. And um, I would want the, I'd want the chilies to be a little bit like a hatch chili. Like I'd want them like chopped yes. up and like tiny. And a slice of cheese on uh, an apple pie is... Oh, yes. Um, let's just go through these ingredients really quickly. Already some great ideas. Amazing. Thank you for for riffing with me for a second. Uh, green chilies, um, depending on what variety we're talking about, you mentioned hatch earlier, which is lovely and domestic to the US, but we could also think about green Thai chilies. We can mm. do um, other sorts of cayenne peppers. Most chilies start green anyway, <laughs> and then they turn that reddish yellowish blush as they get older in age. Um, so there can be a variety from jalapeno to serrano to Thai to hatch to all sorts of things. So you have a lot of possibility there, my friends. Chilies can be spicy if you leave the seeds and the pith. So if you want it to tone it down, you remove that. You can also soak it in vinegars or citrus to take away that spicy bite. Um, Cause uh, that capsaicin can be muted down with uh, dairy and acids. Uh, they can be charred, they can be fermented, they can be, there are so many things you can do with chili. It's a very flexible ingredient. Leftover turkey. This is a funny challenge because leftover turkey can be a little dry. And so I think one of the solutions, you, if you're going to think about a dish with leftover turkey, think about how you're going to moisten that again, or if there's include a sauce that, um, you know, will, will help that texture, or you could lean fully into that dryness and make jerky or, um, mm. Kind of like a pork song. You know what that is? It's like um, uh, pork song is pork beef jerky that is uh, torn up into a floss. So it's used oh, in a lot amazing. of, yeah, it's used in a lot of uh, Chinese cooking. So you could do a turkey floss as a topping for a savory mm. pastry or a topping on pizza or something. Um, so there's That's lots of ways better. you can work with that turkey. I could do pulled turkey, like pulled pork, but you know, have a different sauce. Um, I feel like we know what American cheese is. <laughs> it is a great melter. It is manufactured here in the US. <laughs> um, very melty. The reason why it's very melty is because it has a lot of whey, which is that byproduct of making cheese. Uh, so that's that's the, the thing that, that helps it uh, melt. Um, and sometimes there's a lot of oil in it. Mm. Um, so it, <laughs> it won't really blend with milk very well sometimes. So you need to use mm. evaporated milk um, mm. because it already has all that oil. You don't need to add more oil. You need oh, something that's, that's so a little more reduced back or half and half, uh, which is not so aggressive with the fat and it won't curdle. Um, moonshine is alcohol. It is kind of the beginning stage of the distillation process. Um, there are all kinds of moonshine. Every kind of alcohol has a moonshine stage, but then it, that is later mm. refined into whiskey, into rum, into gin. Um, but this is like the very, very high alcohol content. So with this, you're going to work with a lot of infusions. You can do flambés. Um, or you can redistill using the other ingredients as to make another kind of liqueur, which is very exciting. That's very um, cool. So, friends, chat, how would you mash up the green chilies, leftover turkey, American cheese, and moonshine? Uh, I think we're going to talk about American cheese slices for this specific one. Thank you for clarifying, LT. Uh, so, uh, it's, a, it's a fun exercise, isn't it? It is. What would happen... <laughs> What would happen if you tried to include some of that moonshine into like a pickle for the jalapeno? What would happen? Oh, yeah. what would it I've do? had whiskey pickles before. Oh sure, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Oh. You could do moonshine pickles. Would it? What would it impart flavor? What would it do? It would uh, give you that little alcoholic edge there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what if we did picklebacks? Sure. <laughs> moonshine picklebacks, just That's danger. That's fun. Danger because moonshine is very strong. Yeah, but <laughs> you do picklebacks with a strong alcohol anyway. Yeah, it's true. That's it's true. Been a long time. Um, another thing that helps me when I'm when I'm doing this exercise is thinking about something you already know how to make very well, mm -hmm. and just swapping in mm -hmm. two of the ingredients somehow, mm -hmm. or like adding it. So, um, yeah, what yeah, you got? Yeah, so I was talking about like doing the the fat washing, which I so I've done this before where with um, bacon I've made bacon Ooh. uh smoky bacon bourbon before um 
where you basically just like you cook your bacon and you take your you want a nice smoky one because that's really the flavor that you're wanting and then you take your fat um and you literally just pour it into a jar with your whiskey um and then let it sit for like 24 hours Mm. and then stick it in the freezer so that the fat separates into a nice Cap. Right, because it solidifies. You can just yeah. Pop right out of the whiskey, and then you don't have any of that actual fat in your whiskey anymore. But it does impart a little bit of a nice mouthfeel to the whiskey, and of course, that nice smoky bacon flavor. And I bet it would be great with um, a turkey as well. But, like, yeah. so what's the cocktail that you make out of your turkey whiskey? Um, mm. I mean, immediately I'm thinking about doing like a Thanksgiving cocktail. So, you <laughs> yeah. Have cranberry, uh, cranberry, your your turkey flavored whiskey <laughs> and uh let's see i bet um i bet an herb would go really nice mashed into that like maybe mm-hmm. maybe thyme thyme thanksgiving yeah, yeah. yeah. thyme yeah. rosemary sage. or sage sure. yeah <laughs> yeah <Sage. laughs> yeah so, good. so i think you could do kind of a smoky savory sweet tangy uh thanksgiving cocktail out of that i think that'd be mm-hmm. oh okay we got we got the uh, we could do, okay, Schmoss says we could do like a chili relleno with the turkey, cheese, rice filling, and then get nuts and flambe it with the moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, lightning's on fire everywhere. I would love that. What about like a cold noodle dish with the turkey Ooh. and then the chili, and then maybe you'd like deglaze with the moonshine somehow sure. during the yeah. saucing process? I mean, you could make noodles with the moonshine, just the same principle of what you were saying okay. with the pie dough. That's could, so cool. Yeah, it would just burn off when you cook it, I think. I don't know that the cheese would have a home in this dish, but... It's okay. It doesn't have to. You don't have to use all of it. You just use two, whatever. Yeah. Uh, no pressure here. <laughs> um, have we ever tried moonshine straight? I have. I have not. I don't think. Yeah, it's fine. Woo, woo. <laughs> that, that was my face that I made. I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I had it with plenty of water. Uh, like, it, it got down to... It's a lot. Nice <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, I don't know. I like it better aged. Um, Chris asks a follow-up question to Chris. Where did you get all this drink knowledge? Practice. Um, Practice. <laughs> um, I think I got into cooking via cocktails because mm-hmm. it was, um, making, you know, I started making cocktails before they kind of blew up popularity-wise um, uh, in the aughts, you know? like mm-hmm. Before it was cool. And not before it was cool, but like, like I said, before it was everywhere. Yeah. Um, sure. and, I, and it was like before because it was like I think I had a mojito somewhere and I was like this is what a cocktail can taste like because I thought <laughs> cocktails were either margaritas or rum and cokes or martinis and I didn't drink martinis um, so th- I got really into making cocktails and discovered like oh this is very easy and as it turns out once you learn technique in cooking you can kind of do anything and it mm-hmm. turns out cocktail techniques are very simple and you can really Screw around with them however you want and just yeah. throw different ingredients together as long as you understand the the basics. Yeah, like I have gotten into, with, with my current project, I've been gotten into developing cocktail recipes, which is all about mm. proportion and a dry shake, I learned <laughs> what a dry what? shake was. What is a dry shake? It's when you, um, when you're doing a flip or like anything with an egg white, you mm-hmm. mix everything in the shaker without ice first to okay. froth it. And then you add the ice and then strain it out. Um, okay. Can I tell you what really I like fun. to do? Yes, please I tell I like me. to do a reverse dry shake. Uh, what uh, is that for the chat? <laughs> a wet I am, shake. I am going to tell you. So what I do is I do the I, ch- I do the chilled. I do everything but the egg with the ice first. So I chill it first. Okay. I do the dilution first. And then I strain all that stuff out into a cup, dump the ice out of the shaker, put the chilled diluted mixture into the shaker mm. with the egg white at that point and then do the shake. Got it. And I find that uh, I get an exploding cocktail shaker a lot less often when I do it that way. I'm, I'm sure this Sure, yeah, the pressure does build up with the froth on, on yeah. the, the dry shake. I, <laughs> exactly. I can confirm that happened to me, uh, but it wasn't so bad. Um, continuing back here, we'll wrap it up real quick, friends. Uh, Schmas says a meaty Bloody Mary would be good, I agree. Oh, um, sure. Ooh, yeah, if we did like a little skewer of turkey in the blood. That's fun. <laughs> oh, with the... That's or, fun. Or a turkey leg in a giant mug of Bloody Mary. Yeah, you can do yes. that entire ingredient times, get your new menu. on a stick. On, 
on that Bloody Mary. Do what? You could do the. You could put the every ingredient on a stick. For mm -hmm. that True. Uh, yes, you could. And LT has a follow up. Maybe a turkey melt with green chili pesto. That sounds oh, delicious. Green chili pesto. Yeah. Um, oh, Bear Claw is explaining what it's like to to have moonshine. Think about that feeling of rubbing alcohol on your hand, and then put that in your mouth. That's what <laughs> it's like. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Um, well, friends, I think we should wrap it up today. If you have any other ideas for this chopped exercise, please do tweet me. I love hearing about your ideas. And um, sometimes I'm that kind of person who sits bolt upright in the middle of the night and is like, oh, 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 oh I need to text tell me if you think of something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So please tweet me, Instagram me anytime, friends. I love helping you figure out uh, how to cook stuff. Um, and we loved all the questions. Thank you all for being here. Christopher and Carly, how can people find you online? Um, I am at Whirring Blender on pretty much every social media platform. Um, and then my uh, my profile is this. my website is just my first and last name uh, dot com and if you have access to Adult Swim watch Bird Girl I designed right. the characters the main characters for that show and I also illustrated the opening for the show oh you're so talented <laughs> <laughs> And what about you? All of my stuff is linked from drhastings.biz. Yeah. 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 And, and please listen to Rude Tales of Magic on all the podcast places. Yeah, we have a um, new episode coming this week. Um, and we, you can find us at Twitter. It's, it's not Twitter rude, slash Rude Tales of Magic. It's like of underscore rude. Rude, yes, yeah. it is. Rude. I am a fangirl of the show. Uh, you can see me tweeting about it a lot. Um, and the latest episode features a fight with a chef. So I, right. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Gerard yeah, Gerard dip our food. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I really you. enjoyed our talk about Yard to Table. Um, it was definitely a new topic for us to tackle. And we're going to have to have you on again to talk more about cocktails and all oh, the other things to. that you all cook in. Um, but thanks, everybody. Um, we will see you again next week, 5 p.m here on attack the pantry and again do not forget um my cookbook is on sale use the code four years on my etsy store to get 20 percent off so uh enjoy that and i will mail it to you shortly if you place an order this week um thanks everybody and good night thank you good night Bye. time to cook dinner